Okay, guys, um, I have been getting quite a number of requests to make a video on the CO2 report, how I read and interpret it, and now I apply it in my analysis to determine my weekly and directional bias on a daily on a daily basis. Okay, so um I'll try as much as possible to break it down and make it as simple as possible. Um so first, what is the CO2 report? The CO2 report is basically um, a weekly report that is being published by um, CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, Commission. Okay, and the report is usually published every Friday, you know, around three three thirty um, New York time, PM New York time, right, and um, what our report shows is generally the aggregate position, like the um, net positions of um, the commercials and the non-commercials. Okay? The commercials are basically like the banks, while the non-commercials are like the hedge funds. Okay, So when we are talking about its importance or its relevance when it comes to trading, the people or the group, that you want to concern yourself with are the commercials, okay? That are the banks that are the one doing the business. They know and understand, you know, the 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 um, know the implications of all this economic data, and they have, you know, insights that regular traders don't have. Okay, so when you are reading the um, CO2 report, your concern should be on the commercials or the large hedgers okay those are the people that you know pretty much knows what is going on even before it happens okay so most of the time what you would see is that before big price moves before explosive price moves you would have they would have been you know positioned okay you would have seen from the report that they are loading short positions, okay? Even though the market at that moment in time might be rallying, it might be going up, but you see them loading more and more and more and more short positions because they know something that, you know, others don't know, okay? And then in a few weeks after, you realize that the market begins to drop aggressively, okay? So to get to the page that I have on my screen what you want to go to you want to go to bashart.com and if you click on the futures here you click on that you would see this drop down okay and um, you click on legacy report okay you can use this as well but personally i like to use the legacy report this is the one that ICT uses, the commitments of traders that shows in the form of a graph. Okay, the form of a graph, but that graph is very misleading. Okay, it's very misleading, and that's why even him, when he wants to use it, he has to like you know apply some other technique to it that allows him to determine what I'm going to show you. You can determine without the need to paint, you know, he has to do some painting and then divide them into two to know you know so that's in my opinion is is not is not um the best way of approaching it perhaps he's not aware of this i don't know but this basically tells you exactly what he was trying to get trying to paint the chart and um you know dividing them into two i might not understand what i'm trying to say but if you have seen ICT's videos on CO2 report, particularly the one in the core content, okay, where you know you had to create some kind of um, painting, okay, to show when they are net short and when they are net long, you know, that in my opinion is not needed. It is not needed at all. If you understand how to use the legacy report, you would see that okay, this is the easiest approach and the fastest way you can understand and interpret the data. Okay, so once you click on legacy report, it brings you here. 
Okay, and for currencies, you want to click on currencies, and for um, indices, you want to click on indices. Okay, so at the moment, I am on the currencies page. Okay, and you also want to make sure that your you are looking at the data for commercial hedges okay for the commercial large hedges you want to make sure this is currencies and you are on commercial page okay this when you click on it you can switch between large speculators and large hedges so the commercials are the people we are concerned with okay so once you have once you are on this page now let me explain what is going on here okay let's look at the color codes the green color code this one basically shows the now before i explain the color codes let me explain how the data is being displayed like um the implication of the negative and when you have negative and positive numbers okay so basically when you have negative numbers like i said the, the report is basically showing the aggregate positions or net positions of these commercials the banks the large hedges okay it's showing their aggregate positions okay based on some you know criteria not all of them are being reported let me put it that way not all of them are being reported but based on certain um threshold or certain rules you know but generally the large hedges those with large positions are those that are reported okay so those with small positions generally are not reported okay so um that said when they have a net position that is short okay when they have a net short position combined together it is going to be negative okay so like this negative 15000 means that they are net short on the dollar by this amount okay so the net short positions on the dollar us dollar index is 15000 contract okay so they are net short on the dollar okay so at our net short position is fifteen thousand dollars so um the so like i said the when they are when you have a negative position it simply means that um they have a net short position that is they are short that's what it means that is the aggregate of all their position is short so that means they are bearish on the us dollar okay that doesn't necessarily mean they're bearish but you know, we can interpret it that way all right and when it is positive okay when you have a positive number normally you can see this as a plus 27,488 well, obviously you don't need to put the plus okay but when you have positive numbers it means that they are net long okay that means the aggregate of all their position is positive that is they are long okay that's what it means you know this is open interest okay if you don't understand open interest you can try to read up on it so that you understand you know what is actually going on here but i don't want to go into the details of open interest and you know how you know the contracts are calculated and all of that but basically when you have positive number it means that they're net long if you have negative numbers it means they're net short okay so this fifteen thousand here means they're net short like this is current data and now let me also say that the data is usually released every friday and it only shows their next position as uh, the last Tuesday of that same week. Okay, so the data is a little bit delayed. It's not like current data. Okay, so the data for last Friday, for example, is showing their net position as that 
Tuesday of last week. Okay, so from Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we don't know what has happened. Okay, we don't know if they've added more longs or short. We don't know. Okay, but usually based on you know, based on history, even despite the fact that the data is delayed by a few days, about three days or thereabout, it is still extremely accurate when it comes to determining, you know, the determining what they are doing, you know, having a general um, idea of where they stand based on the market sentiment, okay? So, uh, it is still very all right, it's still very accurate, but it's something you have to bear in mind that the data is a little bit delayed, okay? It's delayed by about three days, okay? So, if something happens between the last time it was reported and let's say within that three days delay, assuming something happens and they've changed their position and you are still looking at the previous data, okay, it can, you know, it can put you in a position you don't want to be in, okay? So you don't want to take the data as a be, be all and end all. You don't want to take it as, okay, you know, that's like the only thing you look at, okay? It can help when it comes to your general analysis and um, your fundamental analysis, but don't just take it. Don't, you also have to look at the chart. Where is price currently um, on the monthly, on the weekly? Is it at a level where smart money would want to sell? Is it at a level where smart money would want to buy? Okay, because price can keep going up and they keep on loading short, more short positions. Okay, so that they are they have a lot of short positions on doesn't necessarily mean that the market is going to reverse right away. Okay, so that's something to pay attention to. But I'll show you how I use it, and it has been very, very accurate for me most of the time. Even there are days when I feel like it should this should not happen, okay, based on my model. And then I don't follow it and I end up regretting. Okay, so that said, um, let's look at the color codes. Okay, let me summarize everything I've said so far just to be sure that okay, you get it. Okay, the negative positions means that net short, the positive positions means that net long. All right, so now let's look at the color code when there is a high okay when they have the highest amount of long positions in the last one year okay, this is 52 weeks that's one year okay so this is 52 weeks high okay that is the highest amount of this value this value that have been reported in in the last one year when it is the highest it has ever been in the last one year it is going to be color coded with this green Okay, this color that's 52 week high now 52 week low means the lowest amount obviously it is negative right okay so we're looking at the lowest amount that is the highest amount of short positions they've had okay remember that negative means short positions okay so this red is showing the highest amount of short positions they've had on in the last one year okay and this color is showing that the previously reported positions were um negative okay like when it switched from positive to negative that is when they switch from net long position to net positive position okay to net um long position as if from net short position to net long position okay that's when this color would be like okay in this situation now this was previously negative 99 okay and that negative 99 for ethereum was the um the previous value was positive okay which is five here so because the previous value was positive and the next value is negative, it's telling us that previous week, their net position was positive. Now, this week, their net position is now negative. That is, they are now net short this week by 99 contracts. 
okay and this is like the opposite okay if the previous value is um negative and the new week is positive this is what would be used as the um that is if the previous value was positive okay and this new week is negative okay this is the color code that will be used okay so you want to pay attention to these color codes because this is typically when there would be turning points in the market okay this is or when it is when the market is close to a turning point okay now very rarely do we tend to see multiple color codes like this so this means a lot okay this means a lot most of the time it is usually like one or two or three that would have you know this color code okay so when we now have multiples you know color code it means something is about to happen okay it means something is about to happen in the market okay now let me use british pound as an example okay when the market is rallying up you want to to be sure to be sure of your long, to be sure that that trend is going to continue, you want to see that they are consistently adding to their lungs. Okay? Now, when they begin to decrease their lungs gradually as the market is going up, what that tells you is that the trend is about to end. Okay? I hope that is clear. That's the first thing you need to understand. Okay? Every week, if the market has been rallying, Every week, when you look at the COT report, to support that trend, okay, you want to see that they are consistently adding more and more and more to their lungs. Okay? Now, when you see that they are gradually decreasing their lungs and adding more shots, what that tells you is that that trend is about to die and the market is about to reverse. That is pretty much what it means okay so that is the first thing you need to know and understand okay the second thing you need to know is that when where is it when you have a 52 week low that is an extremely high probability that the market is about to switch bearish okay so remember negative is what short position so when you have a 52 week low it means that they have the highest amount of short positions in the last one year okay you can see from here 70 this is 17,000. even though this is 50, they are still net long here okay but what that means is that this is the at this point in time the this is the point in time where they have the highest amount of short position that is the highest amount of short positions they've ever had even though this is like you no know, you are looking at the net the aggregate of both long and short positions obviously right now longs are more than shorts but what this red is showing is that at this point in time the highest amount of short positions they've had on the last one year you know even though the value is not here, but we can check for the individual value. Okay, but what it is basically saying is that at this point in time, they have the highest amount of short positions on in the last one year. Okay, in the last 52 weeks. Okay, so the way that I use this personally is that whenever at the beginning of every week, like on Saturday or on Friday, when they release the report. I want to check what is the trend. Okay, what have they been doing? Okay, for example, I primarily trade Euro USD. Okay, so you want to check Euro FX, and you want to check what is the trend. For example, we know that market has been going up. Euro FX has been going up, going up for a while. Okay, look at December twentieth. We see that they were net short. When I 86,000 contract. Okay, so if you go into the chart, let's go into the chart. Um, 
Okay, this is DXY. So let's check Euro. If we check 20, let's check the daily. Twenty of okay, so this is twenty eight so twenty eight is somewhere around here, so at that moment, we know that at this level on the twenty eight if we should go back to. So we see from these reports that on the 20th, they had 186,000 short position or net short positions, okay? Net positions, and their net position is short. So we have like, one, like not 186,000 short positions, but net positions, okay? And the aggregate of their position here is negative. Okay, so by the time we see that data, we know that the market is likely going to turn bearish soon. All right, the following week on the 27th, we see the highest, we see another net short position. This is the 52 week low. That means this is the highest amount of short positions they've ever had on in the last one year okay so let's check december 27 we're going to the chart and we check december 27 somewhere here so when we see december 27 we know that the market is about to switch bearish so when are we do we are we going to see this data this data was released on friday so one so this data was released on friday okay Friday is when we'll see the data that, oh, they now have the highest amount of short positions they've ever had on in the last one year. So on the Monday, on the Monday, what will be our bias? Our bias will be bearish. Okay, that's how I personally use it. So if we go to the one hour time frame, Let's go to 27s. Okay, so on the 27th, we see that um, Okay. Um, so 27th should be somewhere here. So as a 27th, okay, as a Tuesday 27th, they had the highest amount of net positions that are sh that is short in the last one year okay in the last one year they have the highest amount of net short position so but we don't get to see that data until friday okay until this friday so by the time we see the data on friday we can then use it as a bias for the following week which will be from monday okay so when monday Tuesday starts our buy our buyers our weekly buyers is going to be what bearish okay and you can see the sell off that happened that week up until Friday all right so on this Friday we would have seen the data that they have on as at this Tuesday so we want to know okay are they adding more to their short positions or are they taking away the short positions okay so let's go back to that data so that i can show you that 
Oh, I didn't switch back to trading view. Oh, sorry. All right, let me just quickly go over what I'm saying again so that um I hope I've switched. Okay, yes. So um what I'm saying is that as at 27th, based on the data on this Friday, okay, the data they release is usually released every Friday, but that Friday data only shows that net positions from Tuesday that week. Okay, so the data for Tuesday. The net position on Tuesday, we don't get to know, we don't get receipts until Friday, 3.30 p.m. New York time. So by the time we are seeing that data on Friday, what we want to see is, okay, they now have the highest amount of short positions on in the last one year. So my bias automatically for the following week is going to be what? It's going to be bearish. Okay. So this is 27, but we saw the data on the 29th. So we know that the following Monday, yeah, there was no Monday because of public holiday. So we know that the following week, Abba should be what should be bearish. And you can see the strong sell-off that happened that week up until Friday before we now saw a strong reversal. Okay, so this Friday is when we are going to see the data for this Tuesday. Okay, so we want to see as at this Tuesday. Are they adding more to their short positions or are they subtracting from it? Okay, if they are subtracting from their positions, it means that this trend is not going to continue. Okay, it means that there is likely going to be a reversal or a bullish run the following week. Okay, how that is clear. So let's check the data for this Friday to see how we can use it to determine our bias for the following week, okay? So let me go back to CF, sorry, to bar chart website. Okay, so, uh, okay, so we're gonna check the, on the 23rd, okay? So this data, this 27th Tuesday data, we now have access to this data. When we see, are they adding more or are they subtracting from it? So we can see from here that they subtracted about 10,000 or 12,000 contracts from their initial net short positions. Okay, so that tells you that, okay, you should be cautious that that trend is unlikely going to continue because generally what you want to see in a strong trend that is going to continue is as that trend as the market is going down they will be adding more and more and more and more until when the trend is about to change that's when they will now start taking off from their position so as a this let me go back to the chart so that you know to understand better what I'm trying to say. Okay, so if we look at, remember the data for this Tuesday, okay, we don't get to see it. Okay, this data here, where is it? 28. Um, 27 as January 3 data. Okay, so the data for this Tuesday, yeah, we don't get to see it until this Friday. So as at this Friday or the Saturday or the Sunday when you are looking at the data, you want to check have they added or subtracted from their short positions relative to the previous week data. Okay, so we see from what I showed you on bar charts that they subtracted from their position. They subtracted about 12,000 contracts from their position. So that tells you that, okay, the following week is likely going to be bullish, okay, because they don't expect that that trend would continue. They have subtracted from their short positions. Okay, so that gives you a bullish bias for that for the following week.
Okay, I hope that is clear. I hope that is not difficult to understand. Okay, basically, you are checking, okay, how many contracts they have on? Okay, have they just recently added a lot of short contracts? Have they just recently added a lot of long contracts? Okay, was the previous value positive? Has it switched negative? Was the previous value negative? Has it switched positive? Those are the things you are looking for in the data. Okay, and you want to check your analysis on um, the daily, on the hourly. Is price at a level where you would expect a bounce? Is price at a level where you would expect, you know, a reversal? Okay, those are the things you want to pay attention to. Okay, now if we check the next week data again, for example, this Tuesday, this is this Tuesday. Okay, the data for this Tuesday are that their net positions as of this Tuesday, we are going to have access to that data this Friday. Okay, so in preparation for Monday, if we go back to check the data for 10th, of January, let's go back to check. Okay, so if we check 10th of January data here, we see that they have now added more shots. They, they added to that shot. Okay, so that gives us a slightly bearish bias for that week, okay? Because they've added more shots. So we are not, it is now more negative. That means they now have more short positions than long positions, right? So if we go into the chart, let's go into the charts. Okay, so we have a slightly bearish bias for that week. Okay, so you can see on Monday, price rallied up formed relative equal highs and then took relative equal highs and dropped down consolidated into Friday. So if you were bullish, you would have made money. If you were bearish, you would still have made money. Okay. So, um, but generally that's how you approach it. Okay. When there is a lot of difference in the amount of contract they have on, you want to, you know, you want to wait and see what the market is doing. That means, you know, the market is likely going to just consolidate or, you know, seek and destroy nothing, you know, no consistent trend. That's typically what would happen. All right. And um, if we check for Tuesday, this is Tuesday, this data now, okay, we are now in a new week, we want to check for this Tuesday data. Once you use the time our bias for the following week. Okay, so if we go back to bar charts, we see that on the 17th, they have now subtracted about four three thousand contracts from their Shorts. Okay, so you see that their net position has reduced by about three thousand contracts. So it is now known. It is not as negative as it was from the previous week. So that means they've taken away from their short positions. That means your bias for that week would now be what would be bullish. Okay, so you want to go back to the charts. So let's go back to the chart and see what played out for that week. So we can see that the following Monday, um, pretty much another consolidation. Is it not consolidation? No. It was actually pretty much consolidation because this is Monday. I can rally it up. Tuesday, loop rallies up. Pretty, pretty much another sideways movement. So, but um, if you were bullish, you would have made money. If you were bearish, you would have made money. So, but basically, that's how you determine the buyer. You can see that the difference in the um, the the difference in the amount of 
contracts they have on like if you compare the two data for the two weeks okay if you compare the two you would see that the difference is not that much okay here they had one eighty two thousand contract here we have 179 so just a difference of 3000 contract that's not much okay that's not a lot okay so basically if you want to and you can see that the market basically consolidated for that week there wasn't really a lot of movement to the other side to the downside okay when there is a big difference in contract okay when there is a big difference like here now we have a difference of about almost 10000 contract okay so there is a good chance that the market might be bearish for the week. Okay, might end up being bearish. That is not a lot of contract because here yeah, this is 179. This is like 7,000 contract. It's still not huge. I like to see like 10 contracts and above. Okay, we have like 20,000, depending on. I mean, I'm referring to Euro now. I'm referring to um Euro FX. I'm referring to Euro FX is you know Euro USD. That's what you use for Euro USD for futures. Okay, so I like to see like ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand contract difference. Okay, but seven thousand is also relatively big, not so big, but still relatively big. Okay, so you want to tilt slightly more to the bearish side for this week. Okay, because now they've added more to their short positions. You want to tilt a little bit more to the um to the bearish side okay so that's pretty much what i look at that's how i determine my bias for the week okay using cot report okay if they've added more short positions i'm leaning more to the bearish side if they've added more long positions from the previous week i'm really more leaning more to the long side to the bullish side if the difference is not that much maybe like three thousand contract five thousand contract I'm going to be a little bit neutral. If there are other reasons why I should be bullish, of course, this is not the only thing I look at. I look at the institutional order flow as well. I look at what is happening on the weekly, the monthly, the daily, okay, where price are traded, where um, if it's price in, in any PD array, okay, is there a reason for price to go up or go down? Okay, I'm not only looking at the COT report, but COT report is very integral, very important when it comes to my um determining a bias my bias for the week and this is pretty much how i do it okay and I, the last thing i want to show you from here is the crosses okay if you you, if you want to know which one you should trade okay euro or pound okay you can see from here that this is british pound this is the euro okay you can see from british pound that British pound are still net long on British pound. Okay, they are still net long on British pound and net short on euro. Okay, and you can see the difference. That means British pound is generally going to be stronger than euro. Okay, if you check the price action from from last week, you would see that um, while euro was trending from Thursday to the downside this guy was basically consolidating okay you can see Thursday basically consolidating around the same area okay why euro was just trending down broke structure to the downside here this one is still yet to break structure okay so those are things that you know those are things you want to you want to pay attention to okay so that's um pretty much it. it's straightforward i hope it's not sounding too technical or too hard for you to understand i hope it is simple enough i appreciate if you can drop your comments um in the comment section i'd like to know if you understand what i have just explained you know um another thing i haven't mentioned is that you can also use this to determine you know which position like okay let me just use an example to explain 
this is US dollar. This is DXY. Okay, we know that Euro US is made up of the US dollar and the Euro. Okay, Euro US, Euro and US dollar. Okay, so if they are heavy long on the dollar and bearish on, I mean, if they are heavy long on Euro and net short on the dollar okay what i should tell you is that the dollar is going to be bearish while euro is going to be bullish okay now this might not be that important for euro usd but it is important for the crosses like euro pound for example if they are net short on euro pound and net long on british pound what it means is that euro is stronger than the British pound. Okay, so that means Euro pound is likely going to be bearish for that week. Oh, that is clear. Okay, you can also find the difference between the contract. Okay, and that will tell you the actual net or the actual aggregate positions that um, they have on on that cross. Okay, I hope that is clear. If you subtract, let me give you an example. This is British pound. This is Euro FX. Okay, so if you subtract 186,450 contract from this, okay, you are going to have a net short position of 100 and, you know, about 160 contract or is it 60? Yeah, about 150 something contract. So that one, so that means they have a net short position of 157,000 contract on euro pound. Okay, so that means euro pound is going to be bearish. It's likely going to be bearish for that week. Okay, depending on what has happened. So when you compare it, if you see that they added the more longs to British pound and more shorts to euro FX, that means that euro pound is going to be bearish for that week okay and if it is the opposite for example they added more shots to british pound and more long to euro fx okay that means that euro pound is likely going to be bullish for that week okay i hope that is clear okay if you have questions um i think i've covered everything important that i need to cover obviously you can also apply this to any of these pairs okay you want to check which one are they adding more more longs to which one are they adding more more shorts to? i want to compare the two of them okay but now one last thing i want to show you is if you are trading crypto this co2 report can tell you everything you need to know it can give you what tell you what is going to happen ahead of time it can tell you exactly what is going to happen ahead of time. Before, prior to all the big crash in crypto in the last few months, since I understood how to um, interpret this data and use it for bias, okay? Every single dump, every single rally, you can see it even before it happens from this data you have here. You can see from here that prior to that rally, Ethereum went from negative to positive. Okay, December 27. If you check the charts, if you check the charts, December 27, you would see that. Um, let me switch let me show you on on british pound i mean on btc okay if you if we go to the four hour time frame we see that 27th of december this is 27 around here they what they went net positive okay they went net positive 
So you can see the big ride that happened after. Let me show you again. You can see on Ethereum and BTC on the 27th, they went what? They went positive on Ethereum and for BTC from over 1,600 something contract to minus 100. And the next week, it went what? Positive. And this positive, look at, okay, prior period was what? Prior period was negative. And if you look at this, here 52 week high this on the 24th this is the highest amount of long positions they've ever had on in the last one year okay so if you want to know when btc is getting to top you want to see that they are removing from their long positions once you see that okay you know that a reversal is is coming for BTC, it's pretty easy, very easy. For BTC and Ethereum, it's very easy to know because the difference will be very huge between that week and the previous week, like we see here. From over 945 contracts, negative short positions to just to five positive long positions. Okay, so this is the difference. Okay, this is the difference. This five does not mean they have only five contracts on. Okay, that's the difference when you subtract the long from the short. So that means they are net positive. Okay, so that's pretty much what it means. Um, I think that's it. If you have any question, um, feel free to drop it in the comment section and um, or on the Telegram channel. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next video.